we're then gonna create a new task. So hop back into your behavior tree, new task. And we're gonna name this into find player location. So once we rename this, the task should rename. Yep, it just renamed itself, so that's great. As usual, we start with an event receive execute AI. Now we're gonna head into a set blackboard value as vector. Vector being a value in three dimensions, an exact location. And this time we're gonna get the player character, so that'll be you as the player instead of the ninja, and getting the player's actor location. And from there, you can just plug this yellow into the value here. Oh, another thing we forgot is to set the variable called vector. <coughs> Sorry. So the, so the blackboard tree knows what value to target. Be sure to set this as a blackboard key selector, make it publicly accessible, and just drag this vector into this key. Then you finish execute. Make sure it's a success. So it's trying to find your play character's location and it's setting it as a vector value. And then this task will finish. Finding player location, so it's not the move part yet, it's just the seeing part. My next step here is to hop into behavior tree. We're gonna set a new blackboard key called can see player, question mark, case sensitive. We're then gonna hop back into our Ninja AI controller. So from content browser, there'll be this Ninja AI controller. And we're gonna add something called an AI perception. In this AI perception, let's add a sense. At the left here, let's make sure it's set to sight. Dominant sense, you can probably set to sight as well. And then you can open up this arrow here, open that up more open it up more and take all of these so it detects everything that it can see. We then want to open up the player blueprint again. So this will be in my assets player. So this will be you yourself. There'll be this file here, which is Kachujin. And we're gonna add a AI perception stimuli source. After that, we're gonna auto-register a source. Click plus here and then sign. Essentially, you're making it so that you yourself as a player can be sensed by other people through sight and make sure to register it as a source. And for the Ninja AI controller, for the AI perception, so your AI controller drives your Ninja itself. So in the driver, the controller, you're creating an AI perception that allows the controller to spot other characters or objects. It's giving it sight, sense, and the ability to detect enemies, neutrals, or friendlies. Start enabled, ticked as well. Cool. So this is the AI controller. We want to scroll down here on the right once you click this. And we want to create a on-target perception updated. And we're gonna, to make this more intuitive, we're gonna rename this blueprint to maybe uh, player, player underscore BP. I should rename here. We're gonna cast to player underscore BP. Actually, wait, that might be confusing as well. Let's just name this player one. Yeah, player one. Because there's a, already a set blueprint for just player without the blueprint. So let's just be more specific and name this player one. 
and that should update in the nope it didn't update so let's just delete that make sure we hop it kind of browser save all compile this as well f7 or just click that cast to player one underscore bp we're gonna plug the actor into here and we're gonna get a blackboard and you want to set the value as bool set value as bool Oop. and for the key name we want to make a literal name called can see oh, can see player question mark we want to do a break ai stimulus expand this by left clicking and successfully sends in this into this bull, bull value essentially what this means is if your ninja controller senses the player character this lady here it communicates to your blackboard if it senses the player and if the ai your ninja can see the player it takes this boolean value to either true or false so if it sees the player can see player is set to true if it cannot see player it sets can see player to false so if you recall in the behavior tree or blackboard we set a boolean value called can see player essentially a boolean value is like either true or false it's either two values true or false okay so now let's hop back into our behavior tree and we're gonna complexify this a little bit selector and then we're gonna make another sequence here and we're gonna plug in a find player location and then a move to let's make sure we compile all of our code as well so that's compiled this is not compiled so let's compile that yep make sure your vectors are set to target location target location again and you should have something like this a behavior tree runs from left to right oh one more step we forgot is to add a decorator and blackboard and we're gonna set this decorator blackboard into can see player blackboard key can see player is not set observer aborts both and we're just gonna click the blackboard base condition Control c for copy and click sequence here then paste can see player and we'll change this one on the right to is a set as mentioned before blackboard trees go from left to right so it's gonna try to read this sequence first so if your ai or your ninja cannot see the player so can see player is not set so that means cannot see player false if your ninja cannot see the player it just does its random roam so uh, you can press the c while you're highlighting to create a code comment If your ninja cannot see the player, it random roams, but if it can see the player, it's going to chase player. A selector, so it either plays this or this. And that's where this observer abort here comes into play. So this is if for example, it can see the player, it's not going to continue down to these three tasks. It just moves on to the next part, which is what this abort does. So if it can see player, it aborts it and moves on to this one. Where it can see the player, it's going to run down here to the sequence. It's going to find your player location. It's going to move to your player location. Let's try that out. Alt P to play so ninja should be chasing it's a little clunky though we can improve it 
find me ninja so yep it's trying to find me right now it sticks next to me but if it loses sight for you even briefly it just resumes to its random roam yep but if it sees you it will start following you i think <laughs> quite clunky we can improve this in the next part which we will hop back to our behavior tree and create a new task yet again and we're gonna name this blueprint base new into chase player so that will rename itself let's start again with an event receive execute ai for good practice let's just add in a finish execute on top of that with a tick in success we're then going to add a simple move to location own owner controller plug into the controller plug this execute into finish execute we're going to add a variable called vector set this to blackboard key selector and make sure it's instance editable or public we're gonna grab this vector, get blackboard value as vector, because we want a vector value from this blackboard key. Plug it into there. And yeah, this should be what your chase player looks like. It's trying to grab your AI's controller, your ninja controller, and it's gonna move to a location that is set by the blackboard key. It's gonna finish itself once it does that. So, uh, let's compile this, hop back into our behavior tree. And instead of this move to, so move to is a default that comes with the blueprint or the behavior tree, sorry. So we can just delete this and replace it with our function that we just created called chase player. Make sure to set your vector to target location so it knows the exact vector to target. So let's click Alt P or play, and it should be a lot smoother now. But it's kind of intense, you can see he's kind of janky. But the ninja is chasing you smoothly, and once it loses sight of you, it's just gonna start its random roam. Yep, it's random roaming. A cool thing you can do is you can alt tab into your behavior tree, and you can preview what it's doing right now. Uh, it's simulating this behavior tree. Right now, it cannot see the player. So it's running through this code. Oh, it can see me now, so apparently it's chasing me. Okay, yeah, it can see me now. It's trapped me. Come here, come here. Yep, so it's chasing me, chasing me, chasing because it can see me. Yep, so it's going through that. Just let's just hit escape here to stop the gameplay. We're gonna add a cooldown to this chase player. Right click cooldown. We're gonna set this to maybe 0 0.2 seconds. It's just good to have a cooldown in general. Oh, I think my Unreal Engine crashed. Yep, it crashed. Uh oh. Let's <laughs> just restart. Yep, Unreal Engine does have a habit of crashing, so you just gotta make sure you always save. <laughs> I wonder where we left off. Anyways, I will skip the video to where we just were. Cool. So, yep, your code should look like this. I actually deleted code comment because it was giving me crashes, but yeah, this is random roam and this is chase player. And we're just, uh, let's, yeah, let's hit play here. Let's see how it acts. So it's still a little sharp once it turns, but we can try and remedy that. So yep, if it sees you, it chases you, but if not, it just continues this random room. Okay, let's hop back into our ninja underscore BP. So I'll be over here in this folder ninja, ninja underscore BP. And we are going to look for rotation values. Maybe it's in mesh, um, ninja underscore BP, yeah. We want to make sure this is disabled and we're gonna head into character movement with rotation still type, and we're gonna use controller to decide rotation set to true. That's a uh, smooth rotation. Over, yeah. 
cool. So let's then set this to Actually, yeah, let's untick this. And we're going to decrease the rotation rate to maybe like 270, which is half of what it was. We'll see how that works with a turn name. Chase me, please. Oh, it's okay. It's better. It's better. It's not as sharp. Yeah. But let's try the other one. head kind of bops with this one. This is like revert that. And we'll see how it plays again. Head still bops. Maybe I'm just seeing things. But yeah, hopefully that made smoother. It's really up to you. <laughs> Those are the fixes I just know of. It will be alright for this beginner tutorial, I guess. So yeah, let's click save all. <laughs>